Hey y'all, welcome to the Memoirs of a Sinner, a personal growth podcast by Her King. been doing research on urban homesteading and what I found is that there is purpose in pruning in the right season. Now there are three prime pruning targets which are you want to target the branches that are diseased that have open wounds, damaged that are broken or cracked, and dead right so that you can reap a proper harvest in harvest season. You also want to cut off branches that are called crisscross branches. So they are branches that are competing for the same space. In the process of pruning, going from tree to tree, you wanna make sure you clean your shears properly because even if you prune your apple tree, for instance, and you didn't realize that it was diseased, if you go from that tree to another tree, then you can contaminate the next tree unknowingly and mess up your harvest right so the goal is to try to keep the longer and thicker branches so a lot of light and air can get into the tree and you want to remove smaller branches so the tree won't have to use all of its energy trying to give nourishment to the branches that won't produce as great of a harvest the longest the longer thicker branches can support the weight of the harvest in genesis chapter 12 god moves abram and sarai from amongst their family to a new land and gives them a promise, right? He he makes a covenant with them. And he tells Abram, as many as the stars are in the sky, I will make your offspring. Now they had no children. And so this is God promising them a child. Now they are getting old in age and impatient. And so Sarai, Abram's wife, has a bright idea. And she says, well, since I'm getting old, I know God made a, made us a promise, but I'm impatient and I, apparently I need to do God's work for him, right? She's making decisions based off of her emotions and she gives her husband, her Egyptian slave as a wife so that he can bear children, right? Now, as soon as Hagar, which is the Egyptian slave, gets pregnant, she got the big head. <laughs> she's over here taunting Sarai, the 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 person who God made the promise with the covenant with. So in no way could it have ever worked out because God made the promise, the covenant with Abram and Sarai. He didn't make it with Abram and Hagar. And so Hagar is taunting Sarai because she feeling like that one never that two, okay? <laughs> and because they didn't prune properly in that season when Sarai and Abram did have the promised child the child that God promised to give them in the first place once that child grew up and it was giving this child a feast and you know celebrating that he had been weaned Ishmael which was Hagar's son the son that they had based off out of emotion starts taunting Isaac which is the promised child so Improper pruning, not pruning in the proper season, is now causing even more conflict later on down the line, right? Abram and Sarai are both at fault here because they didn't want to wait. They were impatient. They didn't want to go through the process that God was taking them through, making decisions based out of emotions. And now Sarai is telling her husband, you need to tell, oh girl, <laughs> tell Hagar and her son, they need to go on about their business. They need to get from up over here because now they're not, not only was she taunting me, but now they're affecting my child, right? And so God goes and tells Abram, said, hey, you know, listen to your wife. Abram then got emotionally invested in this child because he didn't have any children um, to begin with. And so this was his firstborn child. And now... God now his wife and God are both telling him send her send send the mistress and her son off and Abram was like yo like you know what the heck 
<laughs> what's going on? And God said, don't worry about it. I'm going to make sure that that child is blessed as well. But the child that receives the inheritance that will receive the gifts and the blessings that I bestowed upon you will only be Isaac. Ishmael will be blessed. I'm going to make sure he has what he needs, but he has to be pruned. He has to be, he has to move from out of this season because he's, he's affecting the harvest that's going to, this taking place that we're trying to grow and develop. Right. Most recently, my pastor preached a sermon about making room for more to receive God's promises. And I'm somebody who enjoys being needed, right? <laughs> I am captain, save everybody, right? I want to be the first call you make uh, <laughs> to, to try to solve your problems, especially in the season I've been in the last two years. I have a lot of free time. So I, I can sit on the phone and, and, and be a therapist for hours and talk about whatever is going on in your life. And show up for you. I didn't. I didn't been so many places in DFW. You know, make no sense showing up for people, organizations, just trying to be present, right? And so, over the last few months, I've been in a completely new season, right? This the purposeful season where God is like, we have to move some stuff around and cancel some stuff and not be so busy and outside in these streets. <laughs> so that you can make room and have the room for the things that I promised you that I that I'm trying to give you. And I don't know how to break up with people. <laughs> I don't know how to I call them breakups. It's not a real relationship. Well, it's a real relationship, but it's not a relation like an intimate relationship. Um but I don't know how to release people. I have um I I just be feeling like people got I got to stick beside them for my whole life and emotionally because I spend so much time emotionally invested in another area I'm no longer emotionally available in all of those other areas you know I can't my mental capacity cannot handle all of that extra stuff and so I have had to set boundaries and prune unfortunately is definitely affecting me emotionally um but there's a greater good for it uh, I've had to release some people and some things and uh, some places that I really enjoy being, some things I, I really enjoy doing because I no longer have room for them. I had, I had to make space for the things that God has planned for me, purposeful things um, where I can live out his will for my life, right? I was so dedicated and invested in these people and organizations. And I'm like, what would they do without me? What's going to happen? Like, how do they survive? How do they move forward without me? And God's like, the same way they were moving forward, surviving before you. <laughs> Why do you think that you are me? Like, I will place people in those positions to help them the way that they need to be helped. And for those people that you were having one-on-one -on -one encounters with, now they should be developed enough to encounter me personally. They have learned enough through what you have taught them, what you what they have learned through um, your conversations that the same way that you access me, they can access me through prayer and uh, spending time with me, right? And so I'm like, you know what? You're right, God. I thought I was being like Jesus. But then when I sat down and really processed it, I'm like, oh, this kind of this kind of seemed like a narcissist. And you don't want to be one of them. Like it made me stop and correct how I moved because I don't want to have a God complex and think that everything revolves around me. And without me in your life, you won't be able to move forward. And and that is very ghetto. Do not recommend. <laughs> in John chapter four, it tells the story of Jesus sitting by a well with a Samaritan woman. Now, uh, before he gets to the well and sits there to meet the Samaritan woman, he's with his disciples and he sends them off to go get food. And it's not by coincidence that he is sitting by this particular well to meet this Samaritan woman, right? It's very intentional, very much on purpose. So he sent some people off in order to have an encounter with somebody else right by having that encounter with the samaritan woman he changed her life and in turn she goes out 
and she shares the kingdom of God with other people and brought other people to Jesus so that they can um, be a witness of the kingdom as well. Now, it is my assumption that she would have been less likely to approach the well with 13 Jewish men because Jewish and Samaritans didn't interact with one another. And so I believe that she felt confident in going to that well because she only saw the one man sitting by it. When the disciples returned, they came back with food and they're trying to get Jesus to eat. And Jesus is like, my food is to do the will of him, who, the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And so the disciples like, what? Like, did he eat already? What's going on? But Jesus is trying to tell them, like, he is centered in the will of God, the father, not the Beyonce kind, but the Clark sisters kind. If you know, you know. <laughs> They are complete opposites, right? But Jesus was in the will of God in making a decision to not eat and to take the time to have that encounter with the woman at the well because she was emotionally making decisions, trying to fill a void. And Jesus was trying to tell her, hey, if you fill that area with God, with the presence of God, with what I can offer you, you never have to worry about that ever again. And that harvest that with, with God, that encounter with her was able to reap a greater harvest, right? Because he, because he sat and chat with her and gave her what she needed. She said, wait a minute, this is good. Like this man didn't tell me about myself and I didn't got a, a new perspective on life. Let me go share this with more people. And the kingdom of God continued to grow. So now look at here, look at here. The Samaritan woman is being blessed exceedingly, abundantly. And now she's going out and telling other people her testimony. And then they're being blessed exceedingly, abundantly. And it's affecting their households and their work environments and, and their friendships and everybody getting what they need. Even when it affects you greatly emotionally to release people and to have to prune, it benefits everybody in the long run because the harvest will be exceedingly abundantly. <laughs> you get what you need because you are in the will of God and they get what they need because they are in the will of God. It may hurt for a minute. That clipping don't feel good. That It does not feel good at all. It, it'll hurt. It's going gonna, it's gonna to sting. But you're going you're gonna to get through that. And in the process, continue to strengthen that organization, those people, whatever it may be through prayer. You can still be praying for them and prune them, right? You can still set boundaries and distance yourself and still be praying for them and encouraging them in the word um, through your through your intimate conversations with God, not directly, but through your intimate conversations with God. And God will hear you on behalf of them as well. You got this. I pray for you. You pray for me. We are gonna be all right. And in the long run, there's going to be joy, unspeakable joy. <laughs> I love you all in real life. If you'd like to stay connected, you can follow me on Instagram at the Insta about her, T H E I N S T A A B O U T H E R, and make sure you subscribe and leave a review.